Beginning our three intensity scales. So just a couple of reminders as you get to class and begin working that you're working to all three intensity scales before you move on to the intensity design project. Okay, so a couple of reminders, you need to do a yellow and purple intensity scale. Remembering that the color families stay the same at the ends. So my middle should be brown, purple. These will all be versions of yellow. My blue and orange, middle one will be black. These should all be blues. Red and green, these will all be green. This one will be a grayish, kind of grayish black. And these should all be reds. They'll be kind of purpley reds, but that's what we're getting when we're mixing green and orange together, okay? Finish all of these first. Remember if you're mixing your red side, for instance, and one of these colors turns completely green, don't just paint it in, you need to readjust. All four of these colors should be versions of red. If I mix a green one, it doesn't belong on the side of the neutral, all right? So make sure that you don't have any cousins coming to visit on the wrong side of your intensity scale. This middle one always will be brown, black, or gray, just depending on the color, okay? Once you've finished all three of these, you can move on to drawing your intensity design. So the way you're gonna do that is on the bulletin board, there is a yellow piece of paper that says intensity, and there's a stack of square pieces of paper there. You can grab one of those sheets of paper and that will become your design. I recommend that you grab a pencil and write your name in a lower corner, kind of small, just in case you need it, you can use the back side. That way I don't have my name straight across the middle and then the paper is not gonna be usable anymore. Your goal is to make a design that fills this sheet, is interesting and has flow. We don't wanna have spots that are too tiny, so I don't recommend anything smaller than the end of your pencil, and not too many things that are the size of the end of your pencil, or it's paint in using your watercolor brush. So make sure you're thinking ahead to every shape's gonna to have to have its own color when we get to the painting phase. Don't make your stuff too tiny. At the back of the classroom, there's a drawer that says templates on it. Inside that drawer, there are all sorts of tracer templates, different shapes, crazy things like puppies and elephants and lizards. Um, I'd avoid anything that's like holiday related, and there are just some right. Also, under the bulletin board in a bin, there are tracer kits labeled per table. So you can go over to the counter to get your tracer bag. It's labeled and it matches your table number up in the corner of the baggie. Inside these tracer kits, there are two of each type of tracer, all right? So you guys can share. Make sure at the end of class, both tracers go back in the kit. So there's a, a circular tracer, there's a triangular tracer, there's a square tracer, there's a hexagon tracer, and a rectangle tracer. So those are all in the plastic baggies over on the counter match. It is also perfectly acceptable for you to just use one single tracer to make your entire design. I think I'm gonna pick the circles. It tends to be my go-to when I don't know what to do. But any of the shapes will definitely work. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, first a few lines uh, to my uh, piece of paper that kind of give me a little bit of flow. Uh, then I am going to use my tracer to go ahead and start filling the rest of my space in. You'll notice that I go right over the top of some of these because I'm gonna go ahead and paint different colors, different versions of the colors that I make uh, as it breaks those lines. If you're using these kind of tracers, you will never make a shape that's too small because this shape is about the size of the end of my finger and that's going to be great for this project. Some students run into trouble is if they make designs that have a few too many tiny designs, then we get to the painting portion and it's really challenging to paint in all the tiny little shapes that they make. So I want my design to be pleasantly full but not so full of super tiny stuff that I'm not going to be able to paint those tiny shapes. Okay, 
I probably have enough shapes. The one thing I'm missing is an 11 value intensity scale, all right? My project needs 11 shapes that go all in a row to make an intensity scale. I can use um, my tracers, right? So I could take and I could make 11 bubbles that all go in a row right here, and that would be in my intensity scale. I can also be sort of sneaky here, just a little bit, my original plan. So I'm going to straighten that thing up, and I'm going to see if I can get 11 spaces kind of right here um, in this section. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. We'll go ahead and call that 10 and 11. I'll make 11 a little bit bigger. And maybe we'll have 10 not go through that shape. So I'm going to just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so I have an intensity scale. I need to find the center one of these. So um, I'm going to walk my way to the middle and find the middle one. The middle one, I'm just going to put a tiny little X. When I start to paint, I now know that that one is the one that's going to be brown, gray, or black because I'm going to begin painting this project with that intensity scale before I do anything else. I'm also seeing that it looks like I have some empty space in here. So I'm going to fill this in with a few more bubbles so that I don't have too much just empty area. I want a nice balance between busy enough and not too busy. So I don't want too few shapes and I don't want so many shapes I'm gonna be overwhelmed when I go to paint. Okay, that looks pretty good. So my design fills my paper. It's got good flow. Um, it uh, has an 11 value intensity scale and I think I'm ready to paint.